Good morning, everybody. 大家早上好。呃、uh, ，Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I just start with a short introduction, a few remarks to set the stage, and then we will have a conversation with Mr. Robin Hu, who will interrogate me. I'm very happy to be here to celebrate DBS's 50th anniversary, as well as the 25th anniversary of DBS's operations in Singapore. In China, DBS opened its first representative office in Beijing back in 1993, long before China liberalised its banking sector. Subsequently, it became the first Singaporean bank to incorporate in China in 2007, and it was the first foreign bank to commence business in the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. DBS now employs. More than 2,000 people across China. DBS took advantage of the long-standing and close partnership between Singapore and China. Our two countries established formal diplomatic ties in 1990, but the foundations were laid down by our leaders long before that. And this year marks the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up policy, 改革开放 as well as the 40th anniversary. Of Mr. Teng Xiaoping's visit to Singapore in 1978, two years before that, in 1976, Mr. Li Kuan Yew had visited China for the first time. As China reformed and opened up, many Singapore businesses seized the opportunities. They ventured into China's vast market, and today Singapore companies are present in almost every province in China. Over the years, we have built up extensive trade and economic links. China is now Singapore's largest trading partner and source of tourists. We are China's largest foreign investor and a key offshore and mid peace center. Between the two governments, our partnership has evolved with the changing development priorities and capabilities of both sides, which is reflected in our three government-to-government -government projects. The first G2G project was the Suzhou Industrial Park, and that facilitated China's industrialization efforts. The Suzhou Industrial Park has done very well and is being replicated in other cities. Then we embarked on the Tianjin Eco City project to support China's sustainable and green development, and the Tianjin Eco City is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. The third G2G project is the Chongqing Connectivity Initiative, and that fits in with three of China's development priorities. So it's a key demonstration project for the Belt and Road Initiative, for the Western Region Development, and for Yangtze River Development. The Belt and Road involves cross-border financing arrangements as well, and this has helped to lower. Financing and logistics costs for many Chinese companies. Indeed, the first cross-border REIT from Western China was listed on the Singapore Exchange just two weeks ago, and that was arranged by DBS. One important component of the Chongqing Initiative is the Southern Transport Corridor, and this is a link that connects from Gansu to Chongqing to Guizhou. To Guangxi, Beibuan, Qinzhou Gang, and from there、uh, it goes out to Singapore and beyond to the whole world. And it is a way to link up the Belt and the Road, and to provide a more expeditious and economical link for southwestern China and western China to connect up to the world and to export to the world and to do business to the world. And this is an important initiative, and one which is strongly supported by both governments. Apart from the bilateral cooperation, both sides are also working on regional initiatives, such as the AIIB and the Belt and Road. Singapore is an early and strong supporter of both of these. We believe these initiatives will benefit many countries that need more and better infrastructure, and we also believe that these initiatives allow China. To play a significant and constructive role in the international system, Singapore and China have made the Belt and Road a new focus 
of their bilateral cooperation. And part of it is infrastructure connectivity, like the Southern Transport Corridor. But we've also identified additional areas of cooperation, including financial connectivity, third country collaboration, and legal and dispute resolution services. Singapore's financial center is well placed to support the Belt and Road Initiative. Already in our bilateral cooperation, financial connectivity is a key highlight. Singapore and Chinese banks operate in each other's markets. Singapore has strongly supported China's renminbi internationalization efforts. And since June last, 2016, we have included the renminbi as part of MAS's official foreign reserves. And this reflects our belief in the future development and importance of the renminbi. Singapore can play a more active role supporting Belt and Road financing needs in third countries. Many Chinese companies use Singapore as a base for their operations in the region. And if you go by Chinese figures, Singapore accounts for 85% of total inbound investments to China from Belt and Road countries. And of China's outbound investments to Belt and Road countries, nearly one third goes to Singapore. In, as for Southeast Asia infrastructure projects, two-thirds of them are arranged by Singapore-based project finance teams, and Chinese banks in Singapore have committed 100 billion Singapore dollars to finance Singaporean and Chinese companies involved in the Belt and Road projects. So Singapore, with our financial center, can help to restructure, to structure and provide specialist financing as well as insurance coverage for Belt and Road infrastructure projects. This strong record of project financing in Singapore is also supported by our reputable and credible legal system. We have a full suite of mediation, arbitration, and litigation services to resolve cross-border commercial disputes. So all these initiatives between Singapore and China will open up more opportunities for our businesses and for our region. But of course, this is contingent on an overall strategic climate. There are trade tensions which have become acute, particularly between the US and China. And there's a real risk that this will undermine the multilateral trading system, a system which has underpinned the growth and prosperity of many countries, including China and Singapore. So China continuing progress and development depends on a stable and conducive external environment. There are no winners in the trade wars. Everybody loses. We hope that trade conflicts can be resolved amicably. We hope that China will continue to develop and grow, and the region and the rest of the world will develop and prosper with it. Thank you very much.